Hi guys and welcome to a new video. So this video is going to be about this amazing product that changed the way I built my electric vehicles. This is a lithium battery BMS. What even is this thing? What even is a BMS? Then why do you need one? And what happens if you don't use one? What could go wrong? Why is exactly this thing so good for its price? A BMS, also battery management system, is a piece of electronics, a PCB, that monitors different battery stats and tries to keep your battery alive. Almost all BMS have something like a short circuit protection, a overcharge protection, a under discharge protection or anything like that. Basically meaning they basically monitor the voltage of the pack and watch out that the voltage doesn't get too high over the limits or too low under the limits or maybe if the charge current is too high or anything like that they will cut off the battery and prevent any damage from happening to the battery and will basically keep your batteries alive. But if you compare the BMS on something like a good e-bike compared to a cheap power tool, you will find a big difference. A lot of e-bikes even and other electronics don't use a BMS that can balance the cells, but only a BMS that cuts on and off if the, cer if the cells get too high or too low of a voltage. They prevent any real damage happening to the cells, but don't actually do anything about it. They just watch out that you don't burn down your house. What a little bit better and also mostly bigger BMS will do is balance the cells. Meaning when you charge up the batteries and one cell reaches a too high of a voltage, the, the BMS will cut off the charging, discharge the one cell and then charge them all back up. This cycle repeats and repeats until every cell has the same voltage. This is usually what a balancing BMS can do. But what could even go wrong if you don't use a BMS? That really depends on the chemistry and the battery you are using. If you're using like the normal 18650s, it could reach from fires happening to actually nothing happening if you, for example, overcharge a cell. With these 18650 cells, like used in my e-bike for example, and also in the older Tesla models, nothing all too bad happens if you actually overcharge the cell, for example. They have a little vent inside there that pops open and steam comes out. And they basically vent out all the pressure that's built up inside. But in case of many lithium polymer batteries and anything like that, some of them explode as soon as they get overcharged. So using a battery without a BMS could literally burn down your house. That's why it's always very important to monitor your cells. I mean, you've probably seen all the, all the news articles about e-bike batteries or these hoverboards or anything like that exploding all of a sudden when charging or even when discharging. And that's simply because they don't use a BMS. They don't measure how much current is going out of the battery. They mo don't measure if the voltage of the individual cells get too high or anything like that. Some e-bike companies like Bionics, they produce quite expensive e-bikes actually. They also don't use a BMS. What they do instead is they have a little temperature sensor on the battery and let's say they get unbalanced the cells and you overcharge one of the cells completely. Then the pack would get so hot that it would shut off. And that's basically their battery management system. They wait until the pack is so bad that it heats up to the, to the point where it almost explodes, but then they turn it off. And just so you guys believe me, here's a Bionics battery open. And they have this thing called Smart Connect inside there. On this side, they have a temperature sensor. Then they have some wires obviously going to the battery and then nothing else. There are only three wires coming out of this battery and I can tell you this is not a 3S battery. I mean, that's some terrible engineering. Smart connect in your ass right there. In a, in a perfect world, you wouldn't actually need a BMS. In a perfect world, every cell that gets off the line and that you put into your device has the exact same characteristics when it comes to internal resistance, or capacity or anything like that. But in reality, we don't have the perfect cells out there. There are always some minor differences. And depending on the cell type, the tolerances between the best cell and the worst cell can actually be quite quite big. So what usually happens with these small or cheap BMS systems that don't balance, you only usually get around 500 to 800 cycles. And depending on the use case, that might even be enough 
because usually 99% of the people who use a power drill will never ever exceed the 500 cycles of, of their power drill because they just don't use it that often. But if you run a system for that long, especially many e-bikes out there, you will see a very big decrease in range usually. Because if one cell is unbalanced, has to cut off very early when discharging and also has to cut off very early when charging because the different voltage between, the, between all the cells will limit the amount of capacity the battery can give you. That's why you usually only see like 500 to 800 cycles on these GPMS. Now you might say, but Leo, balancing battery management systems have been out there for like forever. And there are actually quite good ones out there. You could buy for, I don't know, 100 or 80 euros or something like that. And you would be absolutely right. But when I was building my electric vehicles, 100 euros for a BMS, for a piece of equipment that only measures the voltage of each cell and discharges the one that's too high, was quite a lot of money for me. So I always skipped out on the BMS, but, but instead built always something in like a plug that you can monitor the voltage of every cell, which was a way cheaper solution for the time at least. And for a long time I thought that was the best solution for me, because every now and then I would plug in my battery into a hobby charger and would balance all the cells. And that actually worked quite well for, for a long time. But I mean, it wasn't the best option and it was really annoying. After I built my last battery, somebody in the comments actually said, Leo, you should really look into these smart BMS systems out there. They are really cheap and really good and I think you're gonna like them. And I said, hey, why not? And actually bought two of these smart BMS systems. And let me just say, I'm really impressed by what these things can actually do. I should maybe show you all the features that this thing has. First up, you obviously have all your balancing ports can handle up to 14S depending on which contacts are soldered in there. This thing works from I think 10S to 14S but is configured to 12S in this case. On the side right here we have a little port where you can plug in this Bluetooth adapter that communicates over UART which enables a Android app which I will show you later on. Also on the other side you have two little ports where two little temperature sensors come in. These two guys and you can place them anywhere on the battery will also get monitored in the app and can also enable things like thermal shutdown or anything like that. And you obviously have the, the balancing connectors with all the wires coming out on the other side also in the package. These are basically the five components you will get when you buy a smart BMS. As I already said, this thing is for 12S system, 43 volt batteries basically. This thing can handle up to 60 amps. And I actually opened this one up and looked inside and yeah, the, the MOSFETs that are built on here can actually handle that current without a problem. I would say pulse, they could even handle like, I don't know, 100 to 200 amps. The balance current is around 60 to 80 milliamps. But if you use a actually decent battery, that usually won't be a problem at all. 60 milliamps for balancing current is more than enough. I've basically connected this BMS already to my e-bike battery. On this side you have the, the battery minus terminal. On, on the other side you have basically the terminal going to the discharge port and also on this side to the charge port. We have of course our little Bluetooth module that's also stuffed inside here if I'm, if I'm closing this up. The app is called Xiaoxiang. So if you connect to it, you will see this screen at first. This thing right here is basically a Coulomb counter. Coulomb counter basically means it counts every single amp that's going out of your battery and inside your battery. So it exactly knows how much capacity is left on your battery. Instead of just estimating your battery capacity by looking at the voltage, this thing actually measures your capacity. So down here at the right, the current we are currently putting in or pulling out, in this case zero amps. But uh, I can do something, I can press on here and now you can see right up here it says lock. So basically there's no voltage going to, the, to all the ports, basically meaning I completely disabled the battery. But remember, this thing can't pre-charge any capacitors or anything like that. If you have something like a vest connected to the other side and you instantly power this thing on, you can blow up your MOSFETs on the BMS. So it, I would really not recommend you use this thing as a turn on and turn off switch. 
but how to build a actually good anti-spark circuit I will go into that in a later video but for now uh, let's just keep going with this thing. Down at the left you can see the temperature that your battery currently has down here and see also new stats. For example the total voltage of the entire pack, the voltage range in my case 4.01 to 4.03. Right here I can see that I ch when I charged my battery the last time. So first up we have the battery state. Battery state, you have something like voltage, of course the current, how many, then the average voltage on, of every cell, the temperature readings of both sensors, and something really interesting, the cycles. The amount of times you actually completely discharged and fully charged your battery. Now right here, this is really, this is really interesting. You can see the voltage of every single cell and even when the, when the battery is balancing, you can even see a little B popping up in this little circle right here. Last time I showed you in my spot welder video right here, how I repaired one of my batteries because a cell was damaged. That's how I found out about it. Because I looked at the cell voltages and I saw one cell going down and down every day with in the protection information you can see how many times your batteries got too low discharge, too high charged, whatever you need. Here you can see the different settings your battery currently has. So I think most important part of this whole BMS is this tab right here, the actually settings menu. So over voltage meaning you can set up the voltage that the battery should stop charge. You could set for example say 80% and the battery would never charge above 80%. So that's really useful if you want that. Then under voltage protection of course, so you don't undercharge your battery ever. And you can set up the capacity so it knows for, for calculations how much percent you got left in your battery. Also the charging duration, how long you want your uh, batteries to charge up usually. Balance mode is basically just close is don't balance, open is yes, do balance. Then balance mode, you can actually set if you want to balance only when charging or if you want to balance when the battery is not charging and not discharging. Then you can set up the voltage at which the battery should start balancing and then also the balance precision, 0.03 volts for example and that should be just fine. Then you could also set the overcurrent protection and the short circuit protection. So in the case of if it ever goes above 500 amps, it just shuts off for a short while. And if it ever goes about 1000 amps, it just completely turns until you turn it on again in the app and you're done. You can obviously lock your BMS with the password. If you only want this thing to charge for two hours and then just stop, you can set it up right here. So I've seen online on AliExpress, for example, there are even smaller versions that support higher current. And I would say you could even like buy the smaller version that supports less current, for example the 30 amps version and solder on some good quality MOSFETs and modify this thing. So you have like a very powerful small smart BMS. So now you might be asking, hey this sounds great, this thing sounds like the best BMS you can get. I told you previously that normal balancing BMS systems, good balancing BMS systems usually cost around 80 to 100 euros. With all the BMS systems out there except the really really expensive ones, I can't actually monitor the cell voltages. So in case something goes bad, I don't know it. So in, in, in my case, I would have never known that this one cell was gone bad while welding because I would have never seen that voltage of this one cell. I would never have seen the voltage go down and down by every day and the battery would just have destroyed itself one day without me even knowing it if, it if I had just put in a normal BMS. Thank goodness I put in a smart BMS and this thing actually saved my battery. I think the origin of all of this general design was lithiumbatterypcb.com there are a lot of different vendors and distributors that sell these things so just search online on AliExpress or on Google for a smart BMS 12S or whatever you need and you will find these things. They are quite cheap and I really recommend them. I'm currently working on a very very cool new project. For example I built this Firefly eSkate remote that I'm going to modify quite a lot when it comes to the code. I'm working on my new FOC electric skateboard and a lot of other great stuff. So if you enjoy this content, I make videos about electric vehicles all the time. Please consider subscribing to this channel and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching and bye.